The Stockholm Marathon consists of two laps around a beautiful city. One of the protagonists of the course is the Festebrunn, a 30 meter tall bridge hosting the 9th and 34th kilometer of the race. Another protagonist of this year's edition was the lovely Scandinavian sun, present all day but considerate enough not to cause too much heat. I came here with a clear goal, to beat my personal best of 3 hours and 26 minutes. This one is probably not the fastest marathon course, but neither is the one where I ran that time. The start was quite relaxed. It's always a bit chaotic if thousands of runners set off together, but the wide roads kept chaos to a minimum, giving us the possibility to enjoy the scenery of the city centre. I started out at a pace that would get me to the finish in about 3 hours and 20 minutes. A bit faster than necessary to get a personal best, but I felt like I could handle it. The first crossing of the bridge wasn't much of a challenge. It's around the 20 kilometer mark that the challenge began for me. At this point, the longer second lap took us outside the city center. This was a windy section with a lot of small elevation changes. The absolute altitude difference was tiny, but the road was bending like a roller coaster, sloping up, down and sometimes even sideways. This threw me out of my rhythm. I didn't lose much pace, but my calves were starting to feel a bit burned out. From kilometer 28 on, the course was flat and smooth again, mostly following the shoreline through the heart of the city. This gave me about 5 kilometers of easy running before I would have to face the bridge a second time. I felt quite well recovered by the time I got there, and I managed to climb the bridge at a reasonable pace. Don't get me wrong, the steel giant was a lot steeper than the first time around, but I didn't slow down too much. In other words, I was still on track for a personal best. It was right after the descent of the bridge that I knew I was in trouble. Running up I had managed, running down gravity had managed for me, but when the road became flat again I had trouble getting back in the rhythm. And over the next kilometer or so my calves gave out completely. I was still running, but now with a ridiculous gait. That final push on your toes before your foot leaves the ground is so important but my calves were refusing the orders to execute it. My pace dropped by more than a minute per kilometer. No chance of running a personal best this way. Pacemakers overtaking you and their flags disappearing into the distance. This is what defeat looks like. By the time I got to the finish at the Olympic Stadium, my gait was every bit as shaky as the footage. I've run four road marathons now, and each of those was different. In each one, I encountered different physical limits. In each one, I got to know myself a bit better. Even though I didn't even come close to reaching my goal, I take away a lot of good memories from this race. And also a general feeling of... Oh.